Hello and assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, I welcome you in this practice to pass webinar, which is for December 2022 session. I am your tutor, Haris Hanif from Tabani's Academy and Tabani's School of Accountancy. So uh, this is day one of your practice to pass session for uh, paper F8 AA audit and assurance. And we are trying to cover the maximum important areas and the requirements which are frequently examined. And uh, especially, uh, in especially I would like to convey the message to all of the students who are appearing for AA that in AA, the knowledge is not a big issue. In AA, along with the knowledge, we should have the good drafting skills of the answer. And we will try to find it out the way how to draft the answer in your uh, exam. And obviously, we will be covering the past practice questions in this webinar so that it will be helpful for you in order to ace your exam. So uh, once again, I welcome you in this day one of practice to pass webinar, which is being organized by Tabani's Academy. And Tabani's Academy is actually the sister concern company of Tabani's School of Accountancy, which is the Platinum Institute in the Southern region of Pakistan. Uh, now I would like to uh, introduce myself first so that uh, before going to proceed with the uh, webinar, so that you will be able to uh, understand about the our college, our teaching method methodology, our recorded sessions, our live sessions, and all that stuff. So uh, these are actually the thing. Um, myself, Haris Hanif, and I am ACC affiliate and graduate in commerce. Currently, I'm teaching paper MA, uh, which is F2, PM, which is F5. Double A, which is F8, and Triple A, which was previously named as P7, at the Barney's School of Accountancy, which is the Platinum Institute in Karachi, Pakistan. And I'm also associated with the Barney's Academy, which is the recorded platform for uh, for the students who are, who are not able to take the physical class or the live session. So the Barney's Academy is actually the platform, which is the sister concern company of the Barney's School of Accountancy, and it has got the Platinum ALP by ACCA. And Platinum ALP is the superior level of uh, the approved learning partner, which met the quality standards according to ACCA. Now, I'm not going to uh, in depth about me and my college because I'm intended to cover the uh, practice to pass session. Uh, but again, introduction is important. I have taught in different other approved learning partners uh, before the Bani's, And uh, my overall lecturing experience is 11 year plus now because I'm teaching these subjects from um, 2011. Uh, I have been selected five times uh, for practice to pass session by ACC Pakistan and one time for marking the mocks with explanation through webinar and that mocks was of paper F8 AA audit and assurance. I have started my career in a bank and worked as an accountant in a textile company in Karachi, Pakistan. Now that's all about my uh, introduction. And these are my um, uh, connectivity channel. Uh, you can follow me on my YouTube channel, which is Harrisonif Official, in which I have uploaded examinable content and the important content relevant for your papers, including MCQs, motivational lectures, and all that stuff. And this is my Facebook channel, Harrisonif Official. You can also follow me on Facebook. And this is my WhatsApp number. You can freely WhatsApp me if you have any kind of concern about me. And now again, I'm coming to this uh, uh, webinar session. And before going to start this webinar session, I would like to I would like to motivate all of the students by showing some of the results. See that these are the results. These are the results of the high achievers of AA audit and assurance. And these are the results. Many of the students secured in 70s, 60s, and 50s. And my student also secured nationwide position in Pakistan. Remember, these, these are the only things which are only for your motivational level, not for the um, showing it up. But this is for the motivational level. Remember one thing, if they can do, you can also do. Because they are also the human being, you are also a human being. And remember, if you have got the very strong vision, you can seriously uh, achieve that success. If you have strong vision, good guidance, and all that stuff. So the point is that these are the results. These are the results for your motivational level so that you will be inspired through this thing. And don't lose the hope. Do not lose the hope, seriously. I am saying don't lose the hope. The loser is the one who is losing the hope. The winner is the one who is, who is hoping well, 
who is achieving well, who is going to do well, who the winner is the one who has got positive mindset, right? So as far as your studies are concerned, and um, I must I must say that you must need a very positive mindset in order to um, ace your exam with good marks or at least to pass or whatever your achievements you, you are carrying in your mind. So the point to be noted is that if they can do, I'm saying again, if they can do, you can also do. Simple as that. Now let's come on to the uh, content of these uh, webinar. Um, in paper F8, AA audit and assurance, you know that your exam is basically split it into two areas. Number one is section A, which has got case OTQs. And I will try my level best to cover case OTQs in this webinar. And I will be, I will be covering the maximum aspects because in paper AA audit and assurance, many of the students are struggling while writing with the substantive procedures. And don't worry about it. I'm going to, I'm here to guide you very well to get you prepared well for the exam. So section A is basically the case OTQs and you will be having three cases worth 10 marks each. And you will be having total 30 marks. My YouTube channel, Harisanif Official, you can uh, go to my YouTube channel uh, where I have already uploaded few of the MCQs from past exams, from past exam, that is 2018, 19, 20, the real past paper exams, MCQs and OTQs, I have uploaded on my YouTube channel as well. So if you need any, um, um, if you need any links, you can simply WhatsApp me, I can send you the link. And in this webinar, in this webinar through the platform of Tabani's Academy, I will also be covering the case OTQs. So these are three case OTQs and there are three CRQs. There are three CRQs worth 30 marks. The second one is for 20 marks. And the third one is also for 20 marks. And that's all your examinable content. I advise you must attempt the case OTQs first and solve those questions first, which you know you can easily handle it out. All right. So uh, these are uh, this is your exam uh, pattern of AA audit and assurance. Now I'm coming to the frequently examined requirements when it comes to CRQ. Now, when it comes to CRQs, when it comes to CRQs, there are three major topics. There are three major topics. One is the substantive procedures. And I'm sure most of the students might be struggling in the substantive procedures because uh, I think that substantive procedures is more uh, controversial aspect than the global warming. It's more than the global warming issue. But, but through our channel, through my lecturing from the Banis Academy and the Banis School of Accountancy, I will try my level best to cover it out and teach you very well in a simple and easy words so that you can increase your confidence. Substantive procedures, there's a topic on risk and response. Obviously, it is the audit risk and response. And there is a questions on controls. And the control question, there is TOC, there is deficiency, there is direct controls. So basically, these are the examinable contents. Uh, these are the major topics which are covered in CRQs and approximately these topics cover approximately 45 to 50% in your exam. 45 to 50% in your exam, uh, because if you can take on average of 15 marks per CRQ, so that it's uh, 45 marks, and then, and then, uh, there will be a few requirements from the case OTQs and all that stuff. So collectively, you can assume that uh, it is around 24, 45 to 40, 50 marks, 45 to 50 percentage in your uh, exam. All right. So these are actually the thing. These are actually the three major topics uh, relevant for your paper FAAA audit and assurance. Now. Now let's start with the uh, substantive procedures. And first of all, I'm, 
Now, what will be the agenda? In uh, the agenda, in these webinars, I will be covering the these uh, three major uh, portions of the question uh, of the topics, along with the case OTQs and how to drop the answer. That's much more important thing. All right. Now, I'm going to explain the uh, hierarchy that how I will be how I will be covering these webinars because your time is uh, much more preci uh, precious because nowadays you will be busy in your revision. And this uh, revision marathon is actually uh, to boost up your confidence and improve your drafting skills, all right? So keeping the things very simple and concise way, I will be typing my answer that, uh, just like that. I have uh, opened up this, uh, uh, my, uh, I've opened up this thing and I will also be, I will also be covering I will also be covering the practice questions. I will be covering the practice questions, but before practice questions, I am going to start, I'm going to start with the basics of substantive and especially how to drop the answer, all right? Especially how to drop the answer, that is much more important aspect, right? So first of all, let's talk about this substantive procedures. What actually substantive procedures means? What actually substantive procedures means? Substantive procedures means that is the test of financial statements, test of financial statements in detailed manner. It is basically the test of financial statements in the detailed manner, and it also include, and it also include analytical procedure. Now see that analytical procedure, analytical procedure means the comparison. Analytical procedure means the comparison. That means the comparison. And if the current year figures are being compared from the past year, from the competitors and all that stuff, so that you will be assuring yourself that the reported figure is actually, the reported figure is actually the reasonable. The reported figure is actually the what? Reasonable aspect, right? So, uh, these are the, uh, this includes the comparison. This includes the comparison. Now, this is the test of financial statements in a detailed manner. And uh, I'm not going to describe you about the financial statements first. Now, see that when I'm talking about financial statements, that means there is SOCI. That means there is SFP, statement of financial position. That means there is a statement of cash flows. There is the statement of changes in equity, changes in equity, and there is notes to the accounts. Now these completely, uh, the set of these five elements is the financial statements. Now in the financial statements, you will be finding further two things. And there is obviously the accounting standards, accounting standards, and these assertions, financial statements, in the financial statement, it is being prepared based on the uh, relevant accounting standards and the assertions. Now, what actually accounting standards, now relevant for paper AA audit and assurance, you should remember your basic bookkeeping, your basic bookkeeping along with the basic accounting standards like IS1, IS2, IS, uh, 16, IS 36, 37, 38, not necessarily 36 impairment testing, but the basic and the basic bookkeeping is too much important for you people and assertions. Now, uh, accounting standards, you might have covered it from your paper F3, from your paper F7, which is financial accounting and which is financial reporting. And as far as the AA audit and assurance is concerned, so I will be giving a very quick recap of the relevant accounting treatment and how to especially drop the answers for the substantive procedures. And what is actually the financial statement assertions? Now see that what is actually assertion? You know, assertion is the declarations in the financial statements, which are being made from the side of the management. Assertion is actually the claim. You can say it is actually the claim, claim. Claim that means the impression in the financial statements. It is the impression in the financial statements from the board of directors. Claim means impression. That means impression in the financial statements by board of directors. Claim, that means 
something is being claimed by the board of directors in the financial statements and those claims are actually known as the assertions or you can say you can say claim means the declarations declarations now let's say for example if i am giving you a very verbal uh, hint that for example if the director is saying that i have purchased the property so that means the property must be existed there the property must be existed there now the purchase purchase is referring that the company is actually owning that thing so ownership is the claim that means i am making the claim that this is my property so that means that i am making the claim so the making the claim making the claim means that uh, it is the assertion making the claim means the assertion right making the claim means the assertion and if the directors are saying that if the directors are saying that they have purchased the property so that means they are actually owning that property they are actually owning that property in addition the property might be no no the property must be existed not might be must be existed so that is the claim by the uh, management that the property exist now you are the auditor you are the auditor remember my words remember my words as an auditor you are not supposed to believe all the claims by the management you are not here to believe all the claims you are here you are not here to believe all the claims remember my words remember my statement don't trust verify don't trust verify for example if i am making the claim that my bank statement is that there is a 100 million dollars in my bank statement not my personal it is of the company so will you believe not at all you will have to seek the evidence of it you will be saying to me mr harisanif please show me your bank statement so when i will be giving you the bank statement that is actually the evidence now the point to be noted is that you are not supposed to believe what i am giving you the message not at all don't trust verify so it is actually assertion is the claim being made by the uh, board of directors in the financial statements and these declarations i made the mnemonic no uh, one of the uh, one of the approved publishers in the notes there was a there was the mnemonic which you can simply memorize that is acca cover p that is acca cover p acca cover p is actually the assertions and these are the assertions which will have to verify which will have to verify because these are the claims which have been given by the management which have been given by the management now i'm going to uh, revise these assertions because remember two things the substantive procedures the assertions these are the very backbone topics of the audit and assurance in every audit and assurance stream whether it is double a or triple a because i do reach triple a as well i do reach paper pm as well all right now uh, the point to be noted is that in paper double a audit and assurance every audit and assurance paper the two topics are very crucial and important and it is the value added topics that is assertions and procedures assertion procedures so you will have to uh, give a very strong emphasis on these assertions and the procedures because it is the thing which you will have to make a connection with each other in order to draft your answer very well all right so uh, now point to be noted is that point to be noted is that that these are the crucial topics these are the important topics and we must need to have a very good understanding of these topics right acca cover p now let's come on to acca a for allocation and c for classification now it is allocation and classification so allocation is classification is actually the thing that the transaction uh, for example the depreciation is being allocated the depreciation the depreciation is being allocated to that tangible non current asset that is the allocation that is something is going something is going to the main heads and classification is actually the sub heads for example if i say that there is a loan so loan is classified as current liability loan is classified as current liability and non current liability and allocation means that something is being the figures are allocated
to correct heads. Figures are allocated to correct heads. C for C for completeness. C for completeness and A for accuracy. Now I'm making the pair of the things. AC allocation and classification completeness means that financial statements, its records are complete. Accuracy means total of figures that is plus multiply multiply minus divide are accurate. That means figures are actually accurate, right? So this is allocation and classification, C for completeness, A for accuracy. Now moving next, and that is C, C for cutoff. Now what is cutoff? Cutoff is actually means that it is directly uh, uh, being related to the topic, which is accruals. That means that transactions are recorded in the correct time period. That means that transactions are recorded. Transactions are recorded in correct time period. Transactions are recorded in the correct time period. For example, if today, if today I have purchased the thing on credit, I should record it now in this time period. That is a cutoff. And O for occurrence. Occurrence means that transaction which are recorded in the financial statements were genuinely occurred. It is not fake. Now see that these all are the claims are being made by the management and you are here and you are here to verify all these assertions. Occurrence means recorded figures are recorded figures were genuinely occurred not fake the transactions are not fake at all the transactions are not fake at all the transactions were genuinely occurred now these are the claims which is being made by the management the claims which is being made by the management is known as the assertions okay now a for allocation and classification ac c for completeness and accuracy c for cutoff cutoff means transactions are recorded in the correct time period Occurrence means recorded figures were genuinely occurred, which is not fake. These are actually the claims by the management. These are the claims by the management. And you are here to believe all these claims? Absolutely not, not at all. You are here to verify these claims which are being made by the management, right? So here you go for the occurrence. Now, C and O, and now there is the V, V for valuations, V for valuations now valuation shows actually the ending value an ending value is being reported in the balance sheet and that is there are many values like you can say there are par value there is fair value there is net book value there is um, nrv that is net realizable value now the claim of the management is that Ending value is referring to the statement of financial position. Valuation means that all assets, all liabilities, all equities are all at their appropriate value. They are all there at appropriate value. Now, this are, uh, these are the valuations. Valuations means all the things are reported at their appropriate valuations, right? So this, this is actually the valuation. Now E, E for existence, E for existence. Existence means that is physical presence, physical presence of something. Now that means the management is making the claim that assets, equity, and liability exist. Asset, equity, liability exist. These exist, right? So these are the claims of the management. And R for 
rights and obligations r for rights and obligations now uh, making the things very simple and um, very simple for example a company had purchased had acquired the machine on lease now the company has got the right the company has got the right to use that machine but it has got the obligation so right there is actually the right on assets and obligation on liability right on asset and obligation on liability and collectively you can call it like an ownership it is a ownership right and last one is p p for presentation now you all know that presentation is the layout that is the layout that is the format of something that is how the transactions are being presented in the uh, annual report that is for, first of all there would be sales there would be cost of sales there would be gross profit and all that stuff right so uh, these are the things these are the things okay so these are the things so uh, these are actually the assertions these are the assertions from the side of the management these are the assertions from the side of the management right now let's uh, come on to the assertions once again and i'm saying that assertions are the claims assertions are the claims being made by the management assertions are the claims being made by the management and you are here and you are here not to believe all the assertions you are here to verify the assertions right so uh, assertion is acc cover p now let's turn on to the procedures because we are here to learn the substantive procedure the crux of substantive procedures now i'm going to teach you right now the audit procedures what is audit procedures if i can summarize very quickly that audit procedures are actually the uh, actions of the auditor audit procedures are the actions of the auditor right these are the actions actions of auditor and these are the actions which you can simply remember by the mnemonic cairo i have also got this thing from the past official study text one of the past official study text there was a mnemonic written cairo it's not the capital of egypt these are the procedures now you have to open up for this abbreviation c for confirmation and you know confirmation is something which you will be obtaining from external party confirmation is something which you will be obtaining from external party a a for analytical procedure now in analytical procedure in analytical procedure there is actually the comparison comparison for reasonableness tests in i there are three things and after these things i will be quickly going to the question practice and how to draft the answer so you will have to um, uh, go through all these webinar completely right so that you will be able to know how this uh, actually works i3 that is inquiry inquiry means something asking questions from client inspection of asset and inspection of documents r2 there is recalculate and there is reperform and o for observation o for observation now uh, inquiry means in something inquiry means something kind of a questioning attitude and remember that you are the auditor you must have a good skepticism that is ability to ask the question inspection of asset that means if the asset is there 
you can inspect it for uh, for its existence that is inspection of documents recalculate reperform and observation now i am now coming to the very 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 important area and that is drafting the answer that is drafting the answer right drafting in substantive in substantive procedures you will have to start your answer with procedures source and the purpose procedure source and purpose don't worry we will be solving the exam question don't worry about it but you know but you should know the marking style you should know that drafting style the marking scheme is important all right so the procedure is actually cairo so what is source source is any thing from where you can obtain the information and the source may be person the source may be any document the source may be the place and what is the purpose remember the students often fail to write the word purpose and when they fail to write the purpose that means they are losing their marks they are losing their marks so purpose is actually to verify purpose is actually to verify financial statements accounting and its assertions financial statements accounting and the assertions you should write three you should remember you should memorize three things procedure source purpose procedure source purpose procedure source purpose all right and one more important thing one more important thing relate your answer with case study now what are the information in the case study you will have to relate your answer with the case study must relate your answer with the case study now in the case study the relating point would be the dates it would be the figures which would be which would have been given in the examination in the case figures name of the company name of the company accounting assertions you will have to relate your answer you will have to relate your answer from this thing right you must have to relate your answer from this thing now i'm not going to uh, teach you how to draft the answer actually so that you will be able to know what are the cracks what are the things how the company should be responded how the company should be responded um, related to the substantive procedures all right related to the substantive procedures uh, if i can open up my uh, rough sheet for example i'm now first of all going to demonstrate with a simple example with a simple example of a substantive i'm not going to open the as uh, open this for the simple substantive right example for the substantive procedures and once you will be understanding this example then i will be opening the answer from your past exam paper let's say i am writing that let's say that i am writing that sono limited had purchased the had purchased the property had purchased the property at the start of the year at the start of the year in property i am just adding the thing that is building at the start of the year
and the company depreciates it using straight line method and we all know that uh, in the piece of land there is no depreciation so this is actually the thing okay this is actually the thing now uh, if i'm writing that the year end the year end of the company is 31st december 20x8 now these are the things and now i have to draft this answer i will have to draft the answer for the substantive procedures right so uh, these are the things for the substantive procedures answer now before going to draft the answers formally now now this is the time this is the time that you should uh, know how to draft well for your answer now if i'm coming towards this thing that you will have to relate to the case study dates figure name accounting standards assertions that the most important part important part important part is that assertion which is acca cover p will also be split down some assertions are purely related to the balance sheet some assertions are purely related to the income statement now see that for income statement and for balance sheet remember this thing acca acca will be applied acca will be applied in both the things in cover co is related to the income statement and for balance sheet it is ver now i am giving you a very quick and very important hint for the answer dropping p is for all now these are the assertions which are purely related to the balance sheet and the case which i have written as an example this is a case of a balance sheet this is a case of a balance sheet that means ver ver valuation existence rights and obligation is the strong assertion for the balance sheet for the balance sheet item now let's come on to the uh, this case study now see that if the company had purchased the building if the company had uh, purchased the building so that means the uh, this is the name of the company and the amount is related to the statement of financial position and the assertion is ver ver is the pure assertion related to the balance sheet item so must write the three procedures on these things that is if the company purchase the property so that means the property must be existed the property must have its ending value that is cost minus depreciation and that is rights and obligation which is the ownership all right so these are the things and the company uses the straight line method and it is not my requirement it is a requirement of is 16 it is a requirement of is 16 that same depreciation on same class of assets so we will have to see that thing all right so the answer drafting is very simple i uh, remember my words answer drafting is very simple the difficult thing would be uh, the difficult thing would be difficult when you believe it is difficult and if you will be thinking that these are the these are the attainable items these are the attainable things so that you will be easily able to uh, handle it and you will be easily able to draw the answer now simple is that i am going to write the substantive procedures see that solo limited had purchased the property that is building at the start of the year at the start of the year and there is no defined useful life there is no defined useful life right now so ignoring the useful life aspect i will be writing three procedures to verify these things existence valuation rights and obligations so if i will be drafting my answer what is the case the company had purchased the building so you will be physically inspecting now this is not this is not this mouse that you can inspect this this is the building for the building you will have to visit that premises in order to verify the existence now see that the drafting style 
is the procedure source and the purpose. It's the procedure source and the purpose. What is the procedure? Procedure is the physical inspection. That means the physical visit. It's a place, property to verify the assertion. That is the existence. Now see that I will be writing. You have to write in a present tense, right? You will have to write in the present tense. That is the action. That is the commanding action of the auditor. And remember, you are the auditor. Remember that you are the auditor, right? So I am writing that physically. Visit the property, okay? Physically visit the property purchased. Property purchased. No property. You will have to write the building. That is a case study. Physically visit the building purchased by. Solo Limited, purchased by Solo Limited. What do you have written? You have written here procedure and source. And what is the purpose? To verify the existence. Now you got one mark. You got one mark for it. Physical visit the property. And the thing which is written here is the existence. Existence is the assertion. So you have written the procedure source and the existence, right? Existence is the assertion. Now, physical visit. Next, when the property exists, I had verified it through my physical visit over there. It's my property, solo limited. How you will be verifying this? Whenever you will be purchasing the asset, there is an invoice. But this is not the asset. This is the asset, this is a property. And there is a legal transfer deed. There is a legal transfer deed from Mr. A. I have purchased. There would be the legal transfer deed. And in the legal transfer deed, there must be the name of Solo Limited in order to verify the rights and obligation. So you will have to inspect, inspect the legal transfer deed of the property. Inspect the legal transfer deed of the building purchased. Inspect the legal transfer deed. Inspection is the procedure. Legal transfer deed is the source document of the building purchased. And you will have to agree the name of Solo Limited to confirm the ownership. And what is ownership? Ownership is actually showing the rights and obligations. Ownership is showing the rights and obligations. Now remember one thing. The question would around uh, five marks. The question would be of uh, these would be of five marks, right? These would be of five marks or six marks. So you will have to write five procedures. And I'm giving you the idea. Do write two to three procedures, two to three procedures for assertions and two to three procedures for accounting. Assertion and accounting. You, you will be in a comfort zone while drafting the answer and inspect the legal transfer deed of the building purchase and agree the name of Solo Limited to confirm the ownership. Now, now this is the valuations. Now, valuation come from IS-16. It comes from IS-16. And obviously, one thing, when the company had purchased the building, when the company had purchased the building, obviously, the double entry would be building debit and bank credit because the company had purchased. And if the company had purchased the building, so that means you have, might have paid them. So agree the amount paid from the bank statement, agree the amount paid from the bank statement of Solo Limited against the building purchase, against the building purchase. So you will have to relate it with the case study, right? You will have to relate to the case study. How, how the thing would be drafted? Agree the amounts paid in the bank statement of Solo Limited against the building purchase, that is the case relation. Against the building purchase, all right? Now, what IS-16 says, I'm not saying that IS-16 says that uh, there should be the same depreciation on the same class of asset. So I will be reviewing your NCA register, non-current asset register, in order to confirm that on the same class of buildings, the straight line depreciation is being applied, all right? So what you will be writing over here, review the NCA register of 
solo limited and ensure the application of straight line straight line depreciation on the same class of buildings as per IS 16. Congratulations, you are near to achieve full five marks. And one thing, uh, you can simply recalculate the non-current asset register. And while solving the, while, uh, solving, uh, the recalculation, there will be the confirmation of the closing valuation and its accuracy as well. Closing valuation and its accuracy as well. So you can simply recalculate Recalculate the NCA register. Recalculate the NCA register to verify the mathematical accuracy of the of the value of buildings as at thirty first December two zero X eight. I have written the dates, recalculate the NCO register to verify the mathematical accuracy of value of the buildings. How many procedures we have written so far, by the way? One, two, three, four, five, we have written five procedures. And one more important thing, uh, the accounting is not complete when the disclosures are not made. So we will have to review the disclosures. That is review the disclosures to ensure complete notes of buildings and property, complete notes of buildings, in accordance with IS 16. So I had written down six procedures, review the disclosures to ensure complete notes. That is the, actually the completeness, right? So these are the cracks to write the substantive procedures. If you can uh, simply, uh, if you can simply, uh, uh, those who are watching it uh, in the recorded video, you can simply pause it and read it once again. Yes, you have uh, read this thing, I am assuming. So the point to be noted is that you should, you should, you should, you should focus on the related assertions and the accounting treatment. Now, there's a very simple thing to uh, memorize and uh, solving the things. Now, I am coming to the... Uh, this my notepad as well in order to cover the analytical procedure and then we will be moving towards the another case study right so the thing is that what about the analytical procedure what about the analytical procedure what about the analytical procedure analytical procedure means it is the comparison it is a comparison the comparison of actual figure with the past, comparison with the competitor, comparison with the budget of company, comparison with auditor's expectations, auditor expected figures, which is related to proof in total. Now I'm explaining this thing, what is actually proof in total and all these things. So analytical procedure means comparison, comparison of the actual figures from the past competitor budget of the company. So that if the figures are reasonable, that means you are assuming that these are the things which are actually correct. All right. So point to be noted is that point to be noted is that that analytical procedure Analytical procedure verifies all the assertions except for rights and obligation. Analytical procedure verifies all the assertions except for rights and obligation because rights and obligation is actually the ownership which is being verified once you see the name of the company in the uh, legal documentation, right? 
so rights and obligation will be uh, verified through the uh, through the name of the company in any documentation and besides that it verifies all the assertions all the assertion all the all the assertions why because the assertions the assertions are actually the allocation classification completeness valuation if the auditor is being agreed if the auditor is being agreed uh, from the assertions that means all the assertions are being verified okay now how to apply the things uh, point to be noted is that note that analytical procedure analytical procedure is applies on balance sheet item and income statement items sfp and income statement and not on all the heads in sfp you will have to apply it on current assets and current liabilities not non current current asset and current liabilities analytical procedures are applied on the regular items for example there is a legal case against the entity so the legal case is not the uh, uh, is that is the item which is regularly occurs the legal case is a is a one of item so you will not be applying the analytical procedure on it analytical procedure applied on the regular items that is current asset current liabilities and in income statement it will be applied on sales expenses all right these are the things which are the routine items so while you will be applying the analytical procedure in the income statement you can simply apply three things that is proof in total that is total comparison that is ratio i am writing in the next page in the next case study so you will be in a better position to understand in sfp you will have to write the total comparison and the ratios which are the days which are the days and uh, remember analytical procedure is actually the comparison of the last year budget company and you will be able to you will be able to compare and analyze whether the treatments are correct or wrong all right so i am giving you i am giving you the example that how to draw the answer for substantive analytical procedure on receivables first we will be going towards this again my examples handouts in example handout and i am going to press enter to move on to the next page for example that uh, example it is of trade receivables so how will you draft your trade receivable substantive substantive analytical it is the always scan this section analytical substantive analytical procedure right so if i'm talking about this trade receivables how will you what i had written over here i had written over here to draft the answer for the balance sheet item you will be writing two substantive that is the total comparison and the ratios uh, ratios which are covered in the days which are covered in the days that is the receivable collection period so how you will be drafting your answer that is you will be writing compare the total receivables over the past years industry averages over the past years industry averages and you will have to discuss discuss with the management and investigate the significant variations not simply not more than that not more than that these are actually the drafting style now in the receivables in the receivables there are receivable days right and how it will be calculated that is receivables over sales 
multiply by 365 days, right? So the 365 days receivable upon sales multiply by 365. And that means there will be the days. If you are agreeing on those days from the past years, that means you are assuming that receivables and these figures are correct. So how you will be drafting your answer that is, you will be calculating. You are the auditor. Calculate the receivable collection period and compare over the past years, industry averages, discuss with the management and investigate the unusual difference. Now that is actually the purpose of this analytical procedure. So you will have to write like that way. And these are for the balance sheet items and keep it simple. And while dropping the answer for the income statement, you will be writing these total comparison ratios and the proof in total. Now, what is the proof in total? Uh, now in the proof in total, in the proof in total, first of all, auditor develop the expected figure. Proof in total auditor, develops the expected figure. Now this is the expected figure, which should be in the which should be in financial statements. Uh, and how auditor develops the expected figure that is average sales, for example, the average sales, uh, and you will be writing like the Example, I am writing here, average sales price multiplied by units. And you will have to compare this with the actual sales. Now let's say, now let's say if this is a sale item, if this is a sale item, so you will be writing like that way that um, multiply average selling price with the number of units sold and compare it with the actual sales, compare it with the actual sales and investigate the significant variations, right? So this is the thing uh, for the, uh, this is the thing for the things, right? Now I'm not going to the open up the exam question. I'm going to open up the exam question and uh, we will be typing then our answer, right? So I'm going to open up the exam question uh, which you might have covered, but according to me, it should be covered in this today's webinar. Uh, yes, this is my introduction file. And yes, this is the, this is the question. And the question is the Pineapple Beach Hotel. The question is Pineapple Beach Hotel, and it is of the past exam paper. The scenario relates to five requirements. I'm not going to cover this first requirement since it's a knowledge base and it's a working papers. Uh, the, the B requirement is, for four marks, see that for four marks, describe the substantive analytical procedure. That's why I have emphasized the substantive analytical procedures over there. Describe the substantive analytical procedure the auditor should perform to, should perform to confirm Pineapple Beach Hotel revenue, four marks. You have to write four procedures and you will be saying, sir, you have taught us three analytical procedure. These are the analytical procedure, right? So you will be having one, one and one, three marks. All right. But here I have taught you three things, but here we have, we will have to write four analytical procedure. And remember that you will have to compare, compare and compare. Okay. Now let's move on. Now let's move on. Now let's move on to the case. And this is the substantive analytical procedure to verify the revenue and the revenue is the income statement item. So first of all, I want you people to read this, this information at least, this, this case. Read this case, hurry up, so that I will be able to draft the answer. Okay, uh, now what is written actually here? Now, what is written? Uh, what is written over here? That is, it is saying that 
the case is saying that it is 1st July Pineapple Beach Hotel. It is 1st July Pineapple Beach Hotel had um, uh, provides hotel accommodation, leisure facilities, and restaurants. Its year ended is 30th April 20X5. You are the audit senior of Varian Company and currently preparing the audit programs for the year ended Pineapple Beach Hotel. You are reviewing the notes for the last week meetings and all that stuff. Okay, so you will have to apply the analytical procedures on this uh, Pineapple Beach Hotel. And so I'm going to write here, this is part B, which is substantive analytical procedures on revenue. Substantive analytical procedures on revenue, right? So how I have to draft my answer, how I have to draft my answer, that's an important aspect. See that the, it is the hotel. So how you will be, first of all, first of all, compare the total revenue, compare the total revenue of the hotel or from the past years and industry average and investigate the significant difference. So you will have to compare, compare the total revenue of the hotel over the past years industry averages that is the competitors okay and one more important thing is that one more important thing is that um, uh, see that sometimes company is also making the budget so you will have to compare it with the budget as well budgeted revenue industry averages budgeted revenue and discuss Discuss with the management. And investigate the significant difference. And investigate the what? The significant difference. All right. Now, uh, this is the thing. Now, point to be noted is that, point to be noted is that you will have to, you will have to, uh, you will have to compare the revenue from each category. Now see that I will have to draw, uh, write something. This is the hotel which provides accommodation. It provides leisure facilities. Okay. Uh, leisure facilities and it has restaurants as well. Restaurants. So you will have to obtain the breakdown. Breakdown of each category and then compare breakdown of each category and then you will have to compare so what you will be writing that obtain the breakdown of revenue of hotel into revenue from accommodation leisure facilities restaurants and compared the revenue and the compared the revenue from each category over the past years this is the thing comparison comparison and comparison analytical procedure means comparison over the past years industry averages over the past year industry averages Discuss with the management. And investigate the significant variations, right? So these are the things. We have written two procedures. One thing is that, one thing I would like to mention over here that let's say for example, let's say for example, you will have to calculate the ratios, ratios, ratios. Now, what is the ratio for sale? If I will be writing here, let's say, this is 20X7, this is 20X8. These are the figure of sale, COGS. 
and this is gross profit. Okay, this is gross profit. So you will have to compare the GP margin. You will have to compare the GP margin, right? GP margin and GP margin. If the GP margin is reasonable, if the GP margin is reasonable, that means the sale is reasonable, the COGS is reasonable, and there should not be too much fluctuations in that gross profit margins, right? So you will be acting as an auditor. You will be calculating that thing and you will have to compare these things, right? So point is that you will be writing, calculate the gross profit margin of total revenue and also of each category that is accommodation, leisure facilities and restaurants and compare the GP margin over the past years, the ending line is same in the, uh, in the substantive analytical. You can also review the answer of the examiner. You will be finding the same wordings, but I'm not, uh, avoid the rote learning procedures, right? You must have to relate it with the case study. Industry averages, discuss with the management and investigate the significant variations. How many procedures we have written? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, yes. And the fourth procedure would be that proof in total. Proof, proof in total. Proof in total. Now, what is the proof in total? Like you will have to apply on the room rates. For example, if I can give you the example of the room rates, observe it. That is the room rates occupied and multiply with the average room rate. Multiply with the average room rate. And that would be developing in your ex mind the expected revenue of the hotel and then compare with the actual thing that is a proof in total. So you will have to explain proof in total that is perform the proof in total of proof in total of accommodation and investigate the significant difference. This is the wrong. This is the inappropriate answer. You will have to explain how the how the proof in total would be applied. That is perform proof in total perform proof in total on uh, hotel accommodation by multiplying the average rooms rate and rooms occupied. This is actually the case connection. Rooms occupied. And compare with the actual revenues and discuss with the management and investigate the significant variations. Now, these are the things. These are the things which we had uh, written, these four procedures, four procedures, right? So uh, if you people want to have a look on this collectively, you can hear, you can see it now, one, two, three, four. And uh, this is the thing simply, this is the simple thing, how to drop the analytical. Remember that in this webinar, I'm going to cover the important cracks, how, how to drop the answer. But I'm giving a quick recap of the things as well, right? So now let's move on to the next one. And the next case is about the part C. This was my part B and what is the part C? This is the part C. And the part C is saying that uh, this it's for four marks, again, for four marks. Describe the substantive procedures the auditor should perform to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence in relation to Pineapple Beach Hotel's depreciation. 
depreciation it is again the income statement item i will be applying now see that depreciation is not related to the revenue this is the independent case please uh, read this thing depreciation read the case of depreciation now in this uh, depreciation case uh, in this depreciation case it is written that mm, pineapple beach hotel incurred the significant capital expenditure during the uh, during the year on updating the leisure facilities for the hotel the finance director has proposed that new leisure equipment should be depreciated over 10 years using a straight line method using the straight line method first of all that you will have to compare the depreciation rate method on the leisure equipment to ensure the consistency of the straight line over the past years right and you will have to discuss with the management remember that thing whenever there that thing which is the estimated in nature is the life this is not something actual this is estimated and whenever there is a whenever there is a estimated thing estimated figures you must 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 have to ask discuss with the management what are the reasons behind the estimations of this thing right so we have to write the four procedures over this depreciation case and that is substantive that is the substantive procedures on depreciation substantive procedures on depreciation first of all you will have to uh, compare the depreciation rates and methods that is uh, on the entire class of equipments over the entire past years to ensure the consistency of the straight line right and you will have to compare the compare the depreciation method or rates of hotels it's the hotels leisure facilities that is the case connection hotels leisure facilities okay over the past years over the past years not with the industry average because industry might be using different method like reducing balance method and all that stuff but the company should use the same depreciation over the same class of asset compare the depreciation method rates of hotel leisure facilities over the past years and ensure the consistency of straight line method on the same class of assets on consistent basis as per is 16 okay and as per is 16 you will have to ensure that consistent methods are being applied right now you can also you can also compare the depreciation with the competitors but i'm not going to write over here that's enough for one mark and you will have to discuss with the management that is discuss with the management about the basis of 10 years life on the Ten years nice on the updated leisure facilities. Updated 
the, the new leisure equipment on the updated leisure equipment you will have to discuss because depreciation is being based on the useful life obviously so you will have to discuss with the management about the basis of 10 years life on the updated leisure equipment and ensure that assumptions are reliable and ensure that assumptions are reliable right and ensure that assumptions are reliable now moving towards the next you will have to perf you will have to perform proof in total that is what should be the depreciation figure let's say for example let's say for example i'm giving the example of proof in total somebody came somebody came at our tabani's school and tabani's academy and he is getting the information from the administration that haris anif sir haris anif is teaching an online class in room number 1 so while moving towards that while moving to uh, moving towards the room number given you will be expecting something that there would be the light camera action laptop online facilities and that you will be having the expected things in your mind and you will have to compare it with the actual proof in total so now the proof in total is that you will have to develop the expected figure now you will be calculating since it is a proof in total total so you will be calculating you will be calculating the depreciation on the updated leisure equipments okay and compare with the actual and compare with the actual that is the proof in total so you will have to write proof perform proof in total perform proof in total uh, uh on the depreciation perform proof in total on depreciation by multiplying the no by calculating the depreciation sorry by calculating you will be calculating you 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 will be calculating right you will be calculating the depreciation by calculating the depreciation on by calculating the depreciation on new leisure equipment using a straight line method over 10 years now this is your expected figure and compare with the actual depreciation and investigate the significant difference that's it simple now the fourth point is that you can simply recalculate now the difference between the proof in total and recalculate is that here you are calculating by yourself and then comparing with the management's work and the recalculation is simply obtaining obtaining the management's calculation and attempt to recalculate right and attempt to recalculate that is obtain the management's depreciation workings and recalculate it to verify the mathematical accuracy of the figures see i have written four simple points and if you uh, people want to read all these points collectively here you go for four marks 1 2 3 4 i'm not writing more procedures to make you people burden eyes but i am writing enough procedures and teach you very well to the point to the exam so that you will be able to ace your exam with good marks all right now now let's move on to the part c sorry part d now the part d is on the food poisoning food poisoning right part d is on the food poisoning we should read out the requirement that is excluding written representation you all know that written representation is taking the written statement from the management now the question is expressly saying exclude excluding the written representation describe the substantive procedures the auditor should perform to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence in relation to the food poisoning claim 
So that is the substantive procedures. Food poisoning. Now, uh, first of all, I want you people to read this case, food poisoning claim. Food poisoning claim. Read this thing, please. All right, now let's read out this thing uh, related to the food poisoning claim. Uh, now, what is written here? Pineapple Beach Hotel uh, directors have uh, received the correspondence in March from a group of customers who attended a wedding at the hotel. They have alleged that they suffered severe food poisoning from food eaten at the hotel and are claiming substantial damages. The company's lawyer have received the claim and believe that lawsuit against the company is unlikely to be successful. Now see that uh, they are claiming that they, uh, this is the unlikely to be successful. First of all, this is not the legal case from the court. The point is that there is a correspondence. Correspondence means the communication with someone. That group of people, that, that, that group of people uh, have sent me, that group of people have sent me, that group of people had sent me the, um, the, the complaint that they are going to file the case against me. So I will have to reply to them. I will have to give reply them. Okay. So that is the written communication, written correspondence, written correspondences. You will have to read the written correspondence first. You will have to read the written correspondence in order to determine the present obligation related to the claim because it is related to the claim and here the application of uh, here the application of is 37 would be covered if the chances are possible then there would be contingent liability there would be contingent liability right and it is only disclosed if the chances are probable there would be the provision. It would be record plus disclose, right? It would be record plus disclose. So the point is that uh, this is related to the claim and the claim would be covered when something, but the lawyer is saying that the claim is unlikely to be successful. So you will have to discuss with the lawyer how he can say, how he can say the claim is unlikely to be successful, all right? So uh, you will have to first review. You will have to first review the written correspondence. You will have to review the written correspondence from the group of customers, from the group of customers regarding the food poisoning claim Rather than food passing claim to determine, to determine, what to determine? To determine the chance of any present obligation, to determine whether any present obligation 
related to the all right but again again you will have to write again you will have to write four procedures and again you will have to discuss with the company's lawyer discuss with the company's lawyer what you have to discuss with the company's lawyer that is the reason of claim being unsuccessful and ensure the assumptions are reliable so you will have to discuss with the lawyer because the lawyer is saying because the lawyer is saying that the claim is unlikely to be successful not me the director the lawyer is saying so discuss with the lawyer of the hotel lawyer of the hotel about the reason about the reason of the claim is unlikely to be successful and ensure the assumptions are reliable we will have to we will have to write the thing that assumptions are reliable the assumptions are reliable we will have to ensure that assumptions are reliable right we'll have to ensure that assumptions are reliable we have to discuss why how can say that and one more important thing one more important thing you must have to read the minutes of bod meeting because sometimes it happens in the real life that for example i am the board of director i am the director i have got the decision making authority and uh, what happens is that i have received i have received this claim right i have received this claim so i am saying that okay give them money and settle this thing so you must have to read the minutes of bod meetings related to the claim because related to the claim why because why because point to be noted is that point to be noted is that it is the decision of the board of directors it is the decision of board of directors whether or not to pay them right and if the directors believe that okay pay them and wrap up this matter so that are a sensible amount of provision or the contingent liability should have been made so you will have to read the minutes of the bod meeting minutes means that the document which is including the final decision of the board of directors so let's review the minutes of bod meetings related to the claim related to the uh, claim made by the review the minutes of bod meetings of hotel claim made by the group of customers okay regarding any settlement related to the key regarding any settlement and determine the chance sis of outflow chances of outflow whether possible or probable all right so this is the thing you must need to discuss that thing okay now point 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 one thing is that i will i will have to write over here so that you will be you will be you people will be able to better understand this thing like that way point is that i'm writing here point is that when something happened when something happened at the year end when any figure is reported when any figure is reported at ye ye is year end okay when any figure is reported at year end it will be settled down in next year obviously it will be settled down in the next year and the next year means that if uh, if there is any provision at the year end it will be paid in the next year so as an auditor you will be reviewing the post year end payments right post 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 year end payments you will have to review the post year end payments if there is any payment made in the next year that means the same amount should be reported in the pre year end provisions in the pre year end provisions right so if 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 any payment is made to the group of customers 
if any payment is made to the group of customers, then review. If any payment is made in the uh, to the group of customers in the post year end, okay, in the post year end, or you can write like that way. If any payment is made to the group of customers, agree the payments in the post year end and follow in the pre year end provisions. And following the pre year end provisions, how many points we have written down? One, two, three, four. We have written on four procedures. Now, simply is that, uh, simply is that. If there is something, so you can review the disclosure note as well. But again, 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 we have written four marks. We have, uh, uh, sorry, we have written four points for four marks. I'm not burdenizing you in this webinar. I'm just intended to give you the confidence to boost up your confidence, increasing your chances of passing, right? Now I'm showing all these four points collectively. You can now simply read these four points. Okay, now uh, we are now moving towards this uh, part D, uh, sorry, part E, and this is again for four marks. That is a discuss the issue and describe the impact on the auditor report. That is a discuss the issue and describe the impact on audit report, if any, if the issue remains unresolved. Uh, please uh, read this thing, read this paragraph. Read this paragraph, please.
All right. You might have uh, you might have read this thing. Now, before going to start with this question, I would like to explain you the impact on audit report. Now, see that uh, there is the audit report. There is the audit report, right? And in the audit report, audit report is basically actually the showing the structure, showing the structure, right? And the report in the report there is there is the opinions. There is the opinions. Now the opinion is unmodified, and the opinion is modified. Okay, uh, unmodified means true and fair, and modified means for the three things. That is qualified, adverse, and disclaimer. Qualified adverse disclaimer. The qualified means which is except for. Except for means except for this thing, financial statements are true and fair. All right, except for this thing, financial statements are true and fair. Adverse means financial statements not true and fair. Financial statements not true and fair. And disclaimer means no opinion. Disclaimer means auditor is not giving any kind of opinion. So these are the things. These modified opinions is covered under ISA 705. Obviously, we are not here to discuss the knowledge issue. We are here to discuss the uh, drafting issues, right? So these are the modified and the unmodified opinions. And one more important thing, uh, ISA 705 says that there are possibility two reasons that there is misstatement and there is lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence lack of sufficient if the evidence if there is misstatement and if it is material now you all know that the uh, that the thing is the material and another thing is the pervasive level pervasive level is the extreme level right pervasive level is the extreme level if it is material then qualified opinions shall be expressed if it is pervasive, then adverse opinion. Adverse opinion will be expressed. If there is a misstatement and the misstatement is of material level, then qualified pervasive level, then adverse. And if there is lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence, and again, if it is material, now lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence means that figures are reported, but you do not have any evidence. That is figures are reported plus no evidence. Or we can say lack of evidence, right? Figures are reported. But lack of evidence. If the figure is reported, but there is lack of evidence and the issue is material, then the qualified opinion shall be expressed. And if the issue is pervasive, then disclaimer opinion then disclaimer opinion shall be expressed right so the point to be noted is that the point to be noted is that these are the things these are the things for isa 705 and one more important thing when the in the case of in the case of modified opinions in the case of modified opinions, you know, there is the opinion paragraph. It will be labeled with the name. That is, it will not be the opinion paragraph. It will not be qualified opinion. It will not be adverse opinion. It will not be disclaimer opinion, whatever the respective opinion is. So then title, title change, that is example. If it is qualified opinion, so the heading would be qualified opinion, right? And next one is the basis paragraph. Next one is the what basis paragraph. Again, its title will be changed accordingly. Example, the title would be basis for qualified opinion. 
basis for qualified opinion, right? Basis. It will be the basis for qualified opinion. So these are the structural changes that is the basis of qualified opinion. Now, uh, one more important thing is that when you are covering the uh, written representation, now see that the case is of the written representation is now first September. Now uh, you know what written representation actually is. Written representation means that company is giving the uh, in the statements. The company is providing the statements, and you have to sign it. And it should be it should be given at the review stage. The date is now first September, and the audit is nearing completion. Suggested wordings for the written representation letter has been given uh, to the Pineapple Hotel, including the point. But the the directors have stated that they will not sign the written representation. They are not signing the written representation. Now, point to be noted is that point to be noted is that it's ISA five eighty, which says that a written representation must be given, and that is actually the letter which is M R L. Management representation letter, which is which is given. At review stage, what is MRL? It is not the evidence. Now suppose that there are many evidences at my table, and you have got invoice, purchase order, and all that stuff. You have got all these things, right? But point to be noted is that point to be noted is that evidences are there. but management is not but management is not is not giving you the written representation written representation is the evidence absolutely not it is the supporting evidence it supports the other evidence okay so mrl means written representation letter is not evidence it's supporting evidence that is confirming other evidences right confirming other evidences now what if if management is not if management is not signing mrl mrl means management representation letter then there is doubt on management integrity and there is a doubt on management integrity and uh, doubt on management integrity and reliability of other evidences doubt over management integrity and reliability of uh, of other evidences now if mrl is not if mr is not given <clears throat> if mrl is not given then there is a doubt on management integrity and reliability of other evidences and that is the case of that is a case of lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence right lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence now if if not signing mrl if not signing mrl that means it's a case of lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence right actually i had written it over there so i am now going to adjust in here if management is not giving the mrl then it's a case of lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence and if the matter is material qualified and if the matter is pervasive then disclaimer okay so just go through these things hurry up go through these things and we will have to type the answer of that part
Now, uh, I have to go to the uh, discuss the issue and the impact on audit report if the issue remain unresolved. Now, the company is not signing MRL. That means company is not signing on a single written representation, not at all. Company is signing the written representation, not at all, not signing any single written representation, right? So that means it's a pervasive case. It's a pervasive case. And that disclaimer opinion will be expressed. Disclaimer opinion will be expressed, right? Now, uh, how to draft the answer? How to draft the answer of this thing? That is part E. Part E, that is impact on auditor's report. Impact on the auditor's report, right? Now, how will you draft your answer? How will you draft your answer? First of all, first of all, you will have to, first of all, you will have to write down the issue. You will have to write down the issue and in issue, you will have to write the uh, matter, the correct treatment plus management treatment matter that is correct treatment management's treatment materiality level this is the issue this is the issue so first now let's do one thing uh, i am i am just writing first the i am writing first about the uh, issue right i am first writing about the issue now the point to be noted is that now the point to be noted is that the matter is um, th this is the matter the auditor had drafted the written representation letter the auditor had drafted the written representation letter and given to the management to sign, which is required by ISA 580, which is required by ISA 580, okay, which uh, given to the management, which is required by ISA 580 and management is supposed to sign that MRL as a supporting evidence or you can say confirming the evidences, confirming the evidences, which is the correct treatment. Now you have to write the management treatment, but management is not signing off, but the management is not signing the MRL as a result, as a result, what is this as a result, that is the impact. And if there is a management treatment, if there is a management treatment, you will have to write the impact. You will have to write the what impact uh, is not signing the written representation as a result. As a result, there is a doubt over the integrity of the management. There is a doubt over the integrity of the management and other evidences and not signing the single written representation is a pervasive matter. It is a pervasive matter. I have written down the issue. I have written down the issue, right? We have written down the issue. Now, now what should be the thing? What should be the thing next? What should be the thing next? And after writing of the issue, you will have to write the impact on the audit opinion. Now, then you will be writing the impact on audit opinion. 
and report plus you will be discussing the basis paragraph you will be discussing the basis paragraph as well now what you will be writing here the impact on the audit report now you will be constructing a case that if the management is not signing if the management will not be signing the written representation then based on the lack of sufficient and appropriate evidence at pervasive level at pervasive level comma disclaimer opinion shall be expressed disclaimer opinion shall be expressed right disclaimer opinion shall be expressed as per isa 705 now you're not supposed to write the name of uh, isa 705 but i'm writing that management if not be signing then disclaimer opinion shall be expressed now you will be discussing the uh, you will be discussing disclaimer opinion shall be expressed as per isa 705 and title would be and title would be disclaimer opinion all right now next the next point to be noted is that you will be writing about the basis for opinion paragraph and you know the basis for opinion paragraph will also be changed as the title basis of disclaimer opinion basis for opinion paragraph will also be modified as basis for disclaimer opinion which should be which should include which should include the reasons of disclaimer opinion and the issue discussed above you know the issue which we have discussed the issue which we have discussed above uh, the basis for opinion paragraph will be covering the uh, entire issue. The basis for opinion paragraph will be covering the entire issue. Now, this is the audit report drafting style. And for that, you will be receiving full four marks. And that uh, this is the agenda for this day one. And remember, once again, this is the challenging aspect. This is not the difficult thing. You will have to manage your time accordingly. So I'm uh, signing off from this day one and see you in the day two. Till then, take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Allah Hafiz.